Footage has surfaced of former Blizzard co-founder David Brevik absolutely destroying Activision. And unfortunately, it might also shed some true light on why Mike Morheim decided to step down as president of Blizzard Entertainment. This might be a tough one to watch if you're a fan of Blizz. Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now, David Brevik, who is a co-founder of Blizzard back in the day, who was also the lead programmer of Diablo, uh, program lead and design lead on Diablo 2, also involved in Warcraft 3, and my own personal favourite, Justice League Task Force for the Mega Drive slash Genesis. He has been revealed on camera... On Twitch, with his wife, talking about Activision Blizzard. Now, the footage that I'm going to show in this video, to give you a proper timescale, was on the 6th of October. So, to put things in a timeline, on the 3rd of October, Mike Morheim announced his resignation as chairman from Blizzard Entertainment. And then, three days later... David is on stream with his wife. They're streaming Path of Exiles, which David helped facilitate the release of in China, I believe. And the conversation moves towards Mike and also Blizzard. And he has some really interesting insights. Now, I will say before I show you the footage, it does appear that David is slightly intoxicated. Now, I don't say this in any shape, way, or form to discredit anything that he says or to belittle anything that he says. I merely say it because when we've had a drink or two, our filter tends to, to vanish a wee bit. So I just think David is speaking without his filter on. That's that's all I want to, to say there. But let's just have a look at what he actually had to say about Mike and Blizzard. I highly suspect though I have no inside information, no factual knowledge, that Morheim was let go. Today, or yesterday, they announced a change to the Blizzard profit-sharing program, in that it's gone. And so I would suspect, given that Morheim resigned a couple days ago, they resigned over this. There's public knowledge that the employees of Blizzard are not going to make as much money. Not like a lot less money than they were. So Blizzard employees on the whole were paid below market salaries. Because they had a bonus program that afforded them the ability to make up for it. A lot of people made decent money through this bonus program but today or yesterday they announced that that program is gone so all the blizzard employees are now making shitty money worse than they did by a long shot a lot of blizzard employees made double what they normally did through the bonus program so removing that means they make a lot less money and therefore I predict that we will see a mass exodus from Blizzard. Now that's some really interesting information. Now this, of course, as I just said, was recorded on the 6th of October. Mike resigned on the 3rd of October. On the 4th of October, however, between these two events... An article comes out from Variety, which we're going to have a look at now. Now, this article is in relation to Blizzard moves money from axed bonus program to employee salaries, which David does not say. He just says that they've axed the bonus money. So they've updated this article and it says Blizzard will no longer offer employees the Blizzard Holiday Plan, a lucrative end-of-year bonus program according to Activision Blizzard 2018 proxy statement. It will instead, a rep said on Thursday, 
in integrate the money into the base salary of employees. Now, judging by the fact that David says they either announced today or yesterday that they've scrapped the bonuses, it doesn't appear as if he's fully aware of what Variety is reporting or if Variety uh, is actually reporting correctly. Although they do say a Blizzard rep told Variety on Thursday, and this is the quote from Blizzard, in December of 2017, Blizzard transitioned 100% of the holiday bonus into the base salary of employees. The holiday bonus program was implemented to provide a lump sum bonus at year end to make the holidays special for Blizzard employees. However, when employees expressed that they wanted the flexibility of receiving that extra 10%, Again, that doesn't marry up with what David said, but David isn't at Blizzard anymore. So I suppose we, we have to take Blizzard at their word here. That extra 10% as part of their regular payroll. Blizzard made that change as part of our overall commitment to fair and competitive salaries. So no employee, including Mike, who of course, this comes out just after his resignation, has lost out on that bonus money. And imagine that's in response to, to people saying, does this bonus scheme that's been scrapped have any connection to Mike Morheim actually resigning? And as we can see, Mike Morheim's cut would have been $370,000. That is heck of a bonus I wouldn't mind myself. What David also talks about, though, is that the employees were actually play, paid lower than industry standard and this Christmas bonus would actually make up significantly for that lower wage and therefore it was a, a very nice thing for them to have. But again, I must stress, David left the company 2003 with 2018. So whereas he may have connections within Blizzard and he may have relationships within Blizzard, doesn't necessarily mean that he knows anything about the true financial circumstances of the employees. The only thing that I can say is if any Blizzard employee wants to reach out uh, in confidence, uh, my business email is in the about section. Uh, I will read anything that you want to tell me in the strictest of confidence. But that didn't stop David from continuing his discussion about this and then moving into the bigger picture, which was actually the effect that Activision is having on Blizzard. So the question now becomes, as a new developer, why would you work at Blizzard? If you're trying to make a name for yourself, if you're new to the industry, if you're a mid-level or, or below designer, why in the world would you work for Blizzard? You're not going to get notoriety. You're not, not going to get profits now. You're not getting paid. You're not getting paid. You're getting below average wages. What would be the incentive to work there? Well, it's still Blizzard, so there's going to be a lot of It's people. Blizzard for another three weeks. Three years from now, Blizzard... In fact, I don't even think Blizzard today is what Blizzard used to be. But... Yeah. Blizzard three years from now, I don't think will be even Blizzard today. It's going to be Activision. Yeah, of course. Activision is taking over. Activision is winning at this slow game. Activision is exiling all of the Blizzard executives. It sure seems that way. Sure seems that way. Metzen, Pardo, Morheim. There's a lot mm -hmm. in the last couple of years of the most influential people at Blizzard. The top five most influential people at Blizzard, three of them are gone in the last two years. And I would say maybe even four of them. And barely anybody can even say who the others are. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see what Blizzard comes up with. I know some of the things that they have planned. 
and we'll see how it goes. You know, if it doesn't go well, will Blizzard even be close to the same? Pretty strong stuff. I mean, he keeps on saying that he believes the Blizzard employees are already working at below industry average. And so the removal of the Christmas bonus and even the integration of it, if you think about it, will just put them up to maybe average. Saying that they are... Activision is essentially pushing out the major Blizzard figures in an effort to take over the company, absorb the company, and eventually turn Activision Blizzard into purely Activision. But from a player perspective, look, I, I don't think we can kid ourselves here, folks. We have seen a distinct drop uh, in our favorite games since Activision came into the picture with Blizzard. Um, Blizzard themselves produced, in the, my terms, World of Warcraft, Vanilla, Burning Crusade, and Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, just pinnacles of gaming. Great direction. Uh, loads to do. A great style of play. Activision comes in. And I think most people see the downturn from Cataclysm onwards. And then we have the debacle that was Warlords of Draenor. But on top of that, the employees surrounding things like the debacle of, of warlords and such, they were kind of anti-customer. When you listen to what they were saying, the way that they trapped people, the way that they uh, suddenly gave up communication, and we even see it now, frustrated, constantly frustrated by lack of true communication with the company. So maybe these employees who are working on these titles are more activision orientated than blizzard orientated uh, maybe mike is one of the last few remaining vestiges of that lineage i think one thing that we can absolutely agree on is david doesn't seem to have any love loss for activision as a company at all and i think that kind of speaks volumes that although he has been removed from blizzard for 15 odd years now he does seem to bear a great deal of passion and loyalty towards the Blizzard brand. After all, he did co-found the company. But he also seems to have a lot of loyalty towards the old guard, Pardew, Metzen, Morheim, etc. And this trend within big business, like we see it with EA, they move in, they take over a company, and then they gut it, or and get rid of the you know they got the ips and get rid of the people or they put a, a completely impossible business model upon it that it never used to operate off before in terms of games like dead space 3 for example completely alter the franchise put out the product and then scratch their heads and say hmm why wasn't that successful oh well shut down the company keep the ip shut it down and this is, this is why we have to be so protective of our non-absorbed uh, studios. And this is why studios also have to be so careful with who they do business with, as we also see with Bungie and their relationship with Activision. Because that seems to be exceedingly rocky as well, as after the earnings call from this quarter, Activision said they were unhappy that Destiny 2 had underperformed. Uh, Bungie came out almost immediately and said, hey, we're really pleased and we're really happy and proud of our product and what we're doing here. And there definitely seemed to be some dissension within the ranks there. But, I mean, my, you know, I, I got no love for Activision. I think the scum, I think EA is scum. I think Ubisoft, the scum companies, I do. I think they are hurting the gaming industry and not helping the game industry. They are not making games for gamers. They are making games for shareholders, as I've discussed in the recent EA video. We are not the person that they are trying to impress. We are not the person that they are trying to produce this product for. We are the cattle. We are simply the dollars and cents and pounds and pennies that they want in order to appease their business model. 
And I think uh, the sooner the industry gets rid of these horrible companies, the better. If you're an independent, I understand the attractive nature of dealing with a big company like this, the audience that it could open up to you. But just be so careful because it could also just lead to your ultimate desire, uh, demise a lot quicker than you imagine. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links there in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.